Australian borrowers will soon have a clearer idea of what to expect to happen with interest rates in August. The inflation figures for the June quarter are due out on Wednesday and to discuss this I'm joined by AMP Chief Economist Shane Oliver. Shane, thanks for joining us. How important, how important will Wednesday's infl inflation data be in determining whether the IB RBA hikes rates again? Well, unfortunately, they'll probably be critical uh, in terms of what the RBA does. The RBA has already indicated a discomfort with the higher than expected inflation numbers we've seen lately. Uh, and the fact that the decline in inflation from 2022 seems to have stalled. So I, I think if the numbers are roughly in line with the Reserve Bank's expectations, or even a little bit higher, it won't be a major problem. So our expectation is that the headline rate of inflation, the CPI will come in at about 3.9%, uh, which is fractionally above what the RBA is expecting at 3.8%. The trim mean will probably come in around 4% or 1% in the quarter. So obviously continued higher than uh, desired inflation. Um, but those numbers are around about consensus. They're a little bit higher than the RBA expects. Uh, I think the RBA would probably tolerate a little bit higher but if it's much higher than that, for example, if the underlying measure, the so-called trimmed mean, comes in at, say, 4.1% or 4.2%, then it would significantly increase the chance of another hike uh, by the Reserve Bank. Why has inflation been so sticky? Because we did get a bit of a surprise on the, inf interest, on the inflation front last time, didn't we? And I think it took the government by surprise too. We certainly did. Uh, we got good numbers up until about February and then from then on, uh, March, April, May, the monthly numbers have surprised on the upside with inflation heading back up again. Uh, and, of course, uh, that's come as a disappointment. Uh, I think there's a combination of factors in there, but the Reserve Bank said it was always going to be a bumpy path to get inflation back down. We've certainly seen that in the US. Uh, the US earlier this year saw three months in a row of higher than expected inflation. They were, like us, talking about interest rate hikes Whereas the last three months, we've seen inflation come back down again, including some numbers released overnight for June. So that's uh, seen the Fed going from uh, possibly talking about another hike to now uh, back on track for cutting rates again, probably starting in September. And to be honest with you, I don't think we're that different to the US or Canada or other countries. We've just lagged a little bit, took us longer to see inflation take off here. And of course, it's taking a little bit longer to get it back down again. Uh, but I think with the economy slowing, with consumer spending depressed, in fact, the average Australian has been cutting back their spending, uh, the housing uh, construction numbers are quite soft. All of those things suggest to us that, that uh, it's only a matter of time before the inflation numbers start going back down again, and therefore the Reserve Bank, I don't think, needs to panic here. Um, and our, our view is that uh, you know, the numbers won't be high enough to trigger another hike, but obviously I'd concede that the risk is quite high. And of course, something this set of numbers won't show is whether the new tax cuts and power bill subsidies that kicked in from July have infected inflation. What impact do you think they'll have and when will we get a, a sense of what impact they've had? Well, they're going to have a confusing impact because the cost of living measures are in the form of like rebates. Now, your, your rent won't go up as much if you qualify. Uh, your electricity bill won't have gone up as much or might even have come down uh, given the $300 household rebate. So those sorts of things will actually detract. We'll see lower inflation. In fact, it's quite likely that the inflation numbers, when they come out for the September quarter in three months' time, will show inflation uh, potentially in the quarter going backwards. Um, but the the, uh, the, the year-ended rate will probably fall below 3%. Of course, what the Reserve Bank will be focused on is the underlying measures. If you, you strip out the impact of these things on electricity prices and so on, uh, what is the underlying uh, pressure doing? And that's why the tax cuts come in. The tax cuts do put more money in the hands of people and they might spend some of that. My feeling, though, is that I don't see Australians going on a spending spree. Uh, Australian household budgets already stretched. Yes, this will provide a bit of relief, um, but I don't think it's going to be enough to cause a spending spree. The other thing you, you should note here is that um, we're seeing slowing population growth. We've seen record population growth that now looks to be slowing down again. That'll take some pressure off strength in the economy. And unemployment also, I think, will rise. So those things should dampen uh, any stimulatory impact from the tax cuts. But the bottom line is we won't know either way for a few months. 
you know, we've got some retail sales figures out this week on the same day as the CPI, uh, but they're for June. We won't get the July retail sales figures, which might give us some clues uh, until another month or so. And of course, the inflation numbers will then start to come out about the same time on a monthly basis. So it's going to be a rather confusing picture uh, mm. as we go through the next few months, partly because of those government uh, measures, which will pull down headline inflation, but of course, do run the risk of pushing up the underlying measures. Shane, we do have to leave it there, but thank you so much. We'll have to see what happens next week. Chat soon. Sure will. Thank you. Thanks.